Hi, Big Tractor Power fans. Welcome to part two of the 2019 Wathan Family Farm Day in Evansville, Indiana. Over 600 people attended this fourth annual Farm Day event to see an amazing collection of farm machinery that includes over 50 four-wheel drive tractors, a variety of classic row crop tractors, construction machines, and farm trucks. In part one of this video series, I took viewers on a walking tour of the Steiger collection at the Wathan Family Farm that includes five decades of Steiger history, starting with the first production Steiger in 1961 and going all the way up to a special edition 50th anniversary Steiger built in 2008. If you have not seen part one of this video series, taking a look at all those Steiger tractors, I will put a link to that video in the description area of this one. We will see two more classic Steiger items as we take the tour in this video, but our main focus will be on the other big four-wheel drive tractors in the Wathen collection. We'll see Big Bud, Wagner, Versatile, Oliver, Jackson, and some homemade four-wheel drive tractors. We'll also take a look at the classic row crop tractors on the farm that include Minneapolis Moline, Oliver, and International Harvester. We'll see a cool classic Peterbilt cab over truck, some construction machines, and say hi to a young big tractor power fan. So let's head out there and see all this big machinery on display. Here is a Big Bud 52550. This was the most popular selling Big Bud in the company's production history from 1969 through 1991. Chris Wathen completely restored this tractor in 2007. It has been the main workhorse on the farm for many years and now is in semi-retirement because they have the new 535 Steiger Golden Demo tractor. This is a 1981 model. It has the ROPS cab on it. Other Big Bud 525s have a more rounded cab known as the Cruiser cab. There were approximately 500 of these built during their time period. It's rated at 525 horsepower. It has a Cummins 1150 cubic inch engine known as the KT 1150 engine. These were also used in Tiger 3 Steigers and versatile 1150s and 1156s. We can walk over here and take a look at Another Big Bud on the farm, this is a 71 model. The first Big Bud ever built was in 69 and HN 250, and this is an HN 250 model. It has triple tires on it, somewhat of a rare option for an early 70s tractor. Much more rounded design than the Series 3 models like the 525, and this actually has another rare option, a fuel extension tank in between the fenders on the back of the tractor. Here's the third Big Bud on the farm. This is a Series 2 model. This would have been offered in the mid-1970s before the big Series 3 came out in 79. The Series 2 model here in the Wathen collection is an HN 360. Here are some more of the Wathens tractors. These are Wagners. These yellow and orange tractors are among the first four-wheel drive tractors ever built. Wagners started offering four-wheel drive articulated tractors in the early 1950s. They would go on to inspire Steigers, Versatiles, and Big Buds. We'll start out here with the last Wagner built. It's a Rago Wagner WA24. It has a 400 Cubbins in it. It originally was delivered in Joplin, Montana. And it has an interesting story. Wagner ceased production of its own tractors in 1968 because it signed a five-year non-compete contract with John Deere to offer its WA-17 and 14 models for the Yellow and Green Company. After one year of production, John Deere introduced its own 7020 four-wheel drive tractor. With the release of the Deer Tractor, the orders stopped for the Wagner built models. The last yellow one built was this WA24. If you're a YouTube fan of Welker Farms, I was talking with Nick via text over the winter and was mentioning this WA24 and he said, this is the one that my grandfather ordered and it was wrecked 
on the way to the farm when there was an accident with a delivery truck. My grandfather did not take the tractor and went back to the factory. Rago bought out the Wagner line because they also made a lot of construction equipment. And in 1972, Rago Wagner rebuilt this tractor and sold it in Joplin, Montana. It's a really cool machine with this black racing stripe, kind of like the 70s muscle cars. And it's a one and only machine and a great part of four wheel drive history. Now that we've looked at the last Wagner, let's take a look at some of the other ones that represent two decades of tractor production. These big machines use Cummins engines, Detroit diesels. They were a lot of were sold in Montana. These were built for the big planes. They kind of look like Tonka trucks, these early ones. Very impressive. This one over here is known as the pumpkin. It's kind of cool. It's got dual diamond turf tires and they put it out for Halloween in front of the farm. They've got eyeballs here, a skull up in the cab and some cobwebs. Just a really cool looking tractor. And at one time, this was a big workhorse. You have to remember when this tractor was built, a 50 horsepower row crop tractor was your big tractor on the farm. Here we can see a tractor mobile. It's a 1956 Wagner TR9. It's got tractor mobile stamped right into the grill. It's got a four cylinder Cummins came out of Havre, Montana, and it was still using non-planetary axles when this tractor was built. When Wagner ceased production, one of the Wagner dealers started his own line of tractors, and those were the big buds. Lots of great history. Here we've got the little four series models. It's pretty, pretty cool for plowing your driveway. Another one on those turf tires. Got the ag tires on this one. WA4s. And now, today we're really used to seeing skid steers. And Wagner kind of built the original skid steer. This is called the Scoop Mobile. And it has one tire in the back, two wheels in the front. A little bit smaller than a, pay a payloader or a wheel loader. Very handy machine in its day and this is where your modern day skid steer loader found its inspiration so thanks for taking a look at some of this wagner history Wathan family farm has steigers big buds wagners and they have a versatile as well this is a designation 6 model 876 this was the last of the versatile color painted tractors in the 1980s in 1987 ford motors acquired versatile in 1986, the company had acquired Sperry New Holland to form Ford New Holland. In 1990, the company switched from the traditional yellow tan, red and black paint scheme on the four-wheel drives to Ford blue and white. This is a post-1987 model, but before 1990. It has the Ford blue logo on the hood, but it's still painted in those versatile colors. In 1991, Fiat acquired Ford New Holland and renamed the company New Holland. They continue to offer versatile tractors through 2001. Fiat, the parent company of New Holland, acquired Case IH in 1999. And in 2001, they spun off Versatile to Bueller Industries. And soon, the tractors were back to their original colors. I always enjoy seeing this Designation 6. 876 out in the field is just a cool four-wheel drive from the 1980s. Here is a Jackson 444. There were only 16 of these tractors built. The builder of Jackson's unfortunately became ill after building only a few and passed away. This is a rare four-wheel drive and it's hard to say that maybe the Jackson name would be up there with Big Bud, Versatile, and Steiger had they been able to continue into production. In addition to building four-wheel drive tractors, Steiger offered implements like this digger disc, a coulter chisel, they offered an offset disc, tandem disc, and this tillage lineup came from the acquisition of Binkley Welbeck, which made a variety of tillage implements that Steiger sold through their dealerships and then acquired and offered all the way through 1986 and some of their discs were even offered by Case IH. 
Here we have the Brute. This tractor was built in the 1970s by Don Wathen. He's the patriarch of the family here at the farm. And back before, there were a lot of big articulated four-wheel drives to buy from a local dealership. A lot of farms built their own tractors, and that's exactly what Don did with the Brute. Very basic, simple machine. Lots of traction, good power. It's got a GM motor in it. So it's got a great sound when it's out and running. You can see that GM imprint here. We can take a look at the tag here. It's got a GM 671 engine. It's got Clark axles, a Mead cab, and a transfer case from a military truck. The hood and fuel tank were custom built. And this tractor was eventually traded for an International 1466. And Chris Wathen purchased this tractor back a few years ago, and now they have fully restored it. Before there were big tractors like Steigers, Versatiles, Wagners, Big Buds, farmers were building their own homemade horsepower. Here we have a tractor that's nicknamed the Swamp Thing or the Swamp Monster. It's actually called the Federal. And this is a home-built tractor that offered a farming operation more tillage power than their row crop tractor could offer that probably was around 50 horsepower at the time. Here's another homemade tractor. This is the Wampus Cat. It features a 250 horsepower Cummins engine. Originally had a Mac engine in it and it's all homemade. This is just simply raw power. Big engine, lots of steel. Here we have the Eucator. It's a Euclid tractor. Euclid made mining trucks, bulldozers, all sorts of mining equipment. And this is powered by a Cummins 220. It's made from a mine truck and was used as a tractor out in the field. Later in the tour, we'll see a big Euclid twin engine bulldozer. Oliver and Minneapolis Moline are two favorite brands on the Wathen farm. They were owned by the White Farm Equipment Company, subsidiary of White Motors, the trucking company. And the last Oliver built was manufactured in February 1976 in Charles City, Iowa. This Oliver 2255 features a Caterpillar V8 engine. It's got a 3150 cat in it. This was a big tractor in the mid-1970s, right around 140 horsepower. Another big Oliver in the 70s was this 2655. This is an LP model. I think there were about 42 liquid propane models built. This has got a factory 800 cubic inch LP engine in it. It was built by Minneapolis Moline, sold in Oliver Green, Moline Zumac Red, Moline Energy Yellow, and offered in Zumac Red as a white plainsman for the Canadian market. Now we can come over and see another white farm equipment brand, and that's Minneapolis Moline. Moline specialized in LP engines. You can see each of these tractors, like the GVI, the G1000, and even the G1350 have LP engine blocks. And the LP was stored in these big tanks, whether they were up here on the front or up on top of the hood. Here we have a G707 LP and then a G1350 LP. This is serial number two, a 1969 G1350. These were built from 69 through 71 and replaced in 72 by the G1355. But here's the second one built. It's got the famous bubble nose of the early models 69 and 70 and it's an LP model we saw the Minneapolis Moline tractors lined up and actually these are Massey Ferguson tractors built by Minneapolis Moline we can see they've got power assist front wheel assist axles on them this one here is an LP model just like the Moline's that tank up there and these were all Massey Ferguson 97s. They're diesel 
and that LP version. They come with a 400 a 504 cubic inch engine and they have Coleman and Elwood front wheel assist axles. And you can see the difference in the way kind of the pumpkin is here on this side and that drive goes up the side. I believe that's a Coleman because they were used on International Harvester front wheel assist tractors and I think this is the Elwood. If I'm wrong please let me know in the comment section but you can see the pumpkins on the other side of this 97. Big tractors in their day. Front wheel assist was a pretty rare option when these Massey Ferguson 97s were out in the field. Here are some more of the older tractors on the farm. Here's a McCormick Deering ODS 6 352 made. The only diesel powered orchard tractor that International Harvester ever offered. Some more older tractors. Twin City. Here's a Coleman. We looked at those Massey Ferguson's and one had that Coleman axle on it. Coleman actually worked on building its own four-wheel drive tractor. This would have been a rigid steer, not articulated. It's got a 525 cubic international engine. Coleman built the front wheel assist axles for IH, so it would make sense that they put the IH engine in their own tractor. This one came from Saskatchewan, Canada, and it was built from front wheel assist axles that were used by Moline and International Harvester. Very rare tractor. Couple more of the old classics here. We've got a Rumley and another LP International that looks like it needs a little TLC, but lots of great history sitting there. Here's the farm's Magnum 7120. This Case International tractor plants all the beans on the farm with a Kinsey 3600 31 row planter. Great classic tractor. The boxcar Magnums are a modern day classic for sure. The farm runs three different Kinsey planters for their cropping operation. This is a model 3600, 1631. It plants all the beans on 31 rows of 15 inches. They have a 24 row Kinsey planter on 30 inches for planting corn and it's pulled by a Steiger Puma 1000. This Puma 1000, like the Steiger 105 we saw, is kind of a baby Steiger used in row crop applications. And again, we can see this big 3700 series Kinsey 24 row that it pulls. Then there's also a smaller 12 row planter pulled by an International 986 that is used for planting a lot of the no-till ground. And it's a Kinsey twin line. We'll walk up here and just get a look at the 986. I've always liked the 86 series internationals and I hope to find more to feature on Big Tractor Power out in the field. There's our 986 and all three of our Kinsey planters. The tractor giving the hay rides today is a Farmel 1206 from International Harvester. Beautiful tractor, the first big 100 horsepower tractor from IH and this tractor is used out in the field to use a rotary hoe in the spring to work up weeds and break up crusts on the soil after the crops are planted. Hope to catch this one actually turn in some dirt sometime. Really cool tractor in the International Harvester lineup history. Farming on the river flats of the Ohio River, there's a lot of waterways to maintain and the farm uses this 1976 International 1566 to mow the banks. Very cool, tough looking tractor. And we can walk back here and see the boom arm of the hydro mower here. That's used to keep all the banks cleaned up. All of the harvesting at Wathen Farms is done by a Case IH 2588 Axle Flow Combine. This is the machine that harvests the crop planted by all these big tractors. Even the farm's combine is a special edition. It's a 30th anniversary axle flow combine. The first was introduced in 1977, and that makes this one 
a 2007 model. Here we have one of the cooler trucks in the Wathen collection. It's a 1966 Peterbilt 352 cab over. It's got a GM 12V71 engine. It's air start. I'm gonna show you a clip of Chris Wathen starting this truck right after I finish the narration of this segment. It's got a great sound to it when it winds up and turns on. This one was actually originally sold in Sweetgrass, Montana. It's got an aluminum chassis, just a cool older truck. And I enjoy seeing these old farm trucks as much as I do seeing the big tractors. Now let's head over and see Chris starting this truck up. In addition to all the tractors, the Wathens have several construction items here. We've got a Case 1845C Uniloader. That was a great skid steer in the 80s and early 90s, built by Case, I think, in Kansas. We've got an international bulldozer here. International sold its construction line to Dresser in the 80s, and then Dresser was acquired by Komatsu. Got the big IH logo right on here. Here's a monster dozer. This is a Euclid. We saw that Euclid homemade tractor out of the old mining truck. This is a twin engine machine. It's called a Euclid TC-12, built in the mid-1950s through the 60s. It's 454 to 500 horsepower. It's got two Detroit 671 engines in it. It's the largest crawler of its time. It came with a 16-foot dozer blade, which I believe is somewhere on the farm. And these were used to build a lot of the California highway system back in the 50s and 60s. Monster dozer. We've got another IH dozer with a bucket on it. International Harvester had a very impressive lineup of construction equipment in the 60s and 70s. I think this is a Clark loader. No, it's a oh, it's a Michigan. I apologize. We got a Michigan wheel loader here, and we've got a Case 580 Construction King backhoe. Get one more look here at all the great construction equipment here in the lineup on Farm Day. Did you know that Steiger made log skidders in addition to its four-wheel drive tractors? Here's a Steiger 850 logger. This one came out of Maine. It's powered by a 353 GM Detroit engine. Only four are known to exist, and there were a total of 10 built. It's got a funk transmission and transfer case, something very different than uh, the traditional field Steiger that you might see. But I'm pretty cool seeing this pulling logs out of the main woods. As we wrap up our time here at the Wathen Family Farm Day, I'm here with Bradley, who's a big Tractor Power fan, and he asked to be in the video, and I think that's pretty cool. Thanks for watching the channel. Mm -hmm. What have you thought of the farm day today? I thought it was cool being my first time here and my dad taking us here. I think there's a lot of cool machines here. You gonna come back next year? Yes. Yeah, it's I a hope so. it's a cool place to mm -hmm. to visit. Well, Bradley, thanks for being here, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the tour. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I hope that you've enjoyed part two of the 2019 Wathen Family Farm Day Tractor Collection Tour. It's always exciting to see all the farm equipment history that the Wathens have put together at their farm in Evansville, Indiana. I'm already looking forward to the 2020 Farm Day, and as soon as the Wathens announce that, I will share that on Big Tractor Power Instagram and Facebook, so you might plan to attend in person next year. 
I really do appreciate the Wathens letting me share their collection here on Big Tractor Power YouTube and follow their farming season throughout the year to see some of these big tractors at work in the field. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, I hope that you might consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube where there are over 1,000 videos of farm machines in action. If you have any questions or thoughts about the video, please leave them in the comment section below as I try to respond to every post that is made. If you would like a preview of what is coming up next on Big Tractor Power YouTube, make sure to check out Big Tractor Power Instagram, where I share pictures and short video clips of what is currently being filmed in the field. As always, thank you for watching.